Here we will investigate what drives chemical reactions. In other words, what causes a reaction to occur spontaneously. A spontaneous process is one that occurs naturally without requiring additional energy input, except for the energy needed to overcome the activation energy barrier. Whether a reaction moves spontaneously forwards or backwards depends on energy changes and the natural tendency towards equilibrium. Some reactions are endothermic and some are exothermic. Since the products of an exothermic reaction are in a lower energy state, exothermic reactions are often more energetically favorable. Some reactions result in a decrease in entropy of the system, but some occur with an increase in entropy. It is important to remember that for spontaneous reactions, in both cases the entropy of the universe increases. An increase in entropy of a system is generally more favorable, as systems tend to naturally move towards greater disorder or randomness. However, some endothermic reactions, such as this one, do occur spontaneously because there is a significant enough increase in entropy of the system to drive the reaction. And some reactions, such as this one, do result in a net decrease in entropy of the system but can occur under the right conditions because it is highly exothermic and the large release of energy drives the reaction to be spontaneous. Clearly, both enthalpy change and the entropy change in a reaction play a role in determining the spontaneity or feasibility of the reaction and a product's stability. The two are related by Gibbs free energy. Enthalpy change and entropy change at constant pressure are related in the Gibbs equation. Delta G, the change in Gibbs free energy of the system, is the energy available to do work. It takes into account the entropy change of the system and the entropy change of the surroundings as a result of heat transfer to or from the surroundings. It uses units kilojoules per mole, as does the enthalpy change. The term T delta S is the energy lost to disorder in the system. Temperature is in Kelvin, and since the conventional unit of the change in entropy is joules per Kelvin per mole, we must remember to convert to kilojoules per Kelvin per mole in calculations. Delta G under non-standard conditions has a value which changes depending on the conditions and the amounts of reactants and products. Under standard conditions, it has a fixed value for a given reaction and only depends on the properties of the reactants and products. The sign of delta G indicates whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. When delta G is negative, this indicates a spontaneous reaction, or we could say it is feasible, it is likely to occur. A standard delta G value less than zero means the reaction is spontaneous under standard conditions. A positive value indicates a non-spontaneous reaction. A positive standard value means the reaction is non-spontaneous under standard conditions. When delta G under non-standard conditions is equal to zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. Delta G standard, however, is not necessarily always equal to zero at equilibrium. Let's look at a problem using the Gibbs equation to deduce if a reaction under certain conditions is spontaneous or not. Calculate the change in standard Gibbs free energy for the following reaction at 298 Kelvin and state whether it is a spontaneous reaction or not. We have the standard enthalpy change, temperature, and standard entropy change whose units we must convert to kilojoules per Kelvin per mole by dividing by 1000. Substituting and solving, we get positive 131 kilojoules per mole. Since delta G is positive, this indicates a non-spontaneous reaction under these conditions. You may be wondering why we use standard values here, but can potentially substitute any value for temperature since it is a variable in this equation.
The Gibbs equation assumes that delta H and delta S are relatively constant over a range of temperatures. And so we can use temperature values other than standard temperature in this equation. In which case we would write delta G instead of delta G standard. The standard change in Gibbs free energy for a reaction can also be calculated using standard change in Gibbs free energy of formation values and a Hess cycle in the same way as reaction enthalpy can be calculated from enthalpies of formation. Standard Gibbs free energy of formation values for some compounds can be found in tables. And the following equation can be used to calculate standard delta G. However, this equation can only be used for reactions happening under standard conditions. Since the change in Gibbs energy of a system indicates reaction spontaneity, it can be used to deduce the most likely direction of a reversible reaction. A negative delta G tells us the forward reaction is spontaneous and therefore the forward reaction will occur. A positive delta G tells us the forward reaction is not spontaneous and therefore the reverse reaction will occur. Both spontaneous and non-spontaneous reactions can be exothermic or endothermic and have an increase or decrease in system entropy. Their spontaneity therefore depends on the relative sizes of these two terms in the Gibbs equation. Temperature is always positive, and so the sign of the T delta S term is always the same as the sign of delta S. For an exothermic process, delta H is negative. If the entropy of the system increases, delta S is positive, and so T delta S is also positive. This will result in a negative value for delta G at all temperatures. And so all exothermic reactions that have an increase in entropy are spontaneous at all temperatures. Oppositely, endothermic reactions have a positive delta H value. And if there is a decrease in the entropy of the system, then the value of delta G is positive, and all such reactions are non-spontaneous at all temperatures. For the other two possible combinations, that is an exothermic reaction with a negative entropy change, or an endothermic reaction with a positive entropy change, the spontaneity of the reaction will depend on the temperature. Exothermic reactions that decrease the system's entropy are spontaneous only at low temperatures, when T delta S is less than delta H. But endothermic reactions that increase the system entropy are spontaneous only at high temperature, when T delta S is very large. Now let's look at a related problem where we use the Gibbs equation to deduce the temperature at which a reaction becomes spontaneous. Deduce the minimum temperature at which the following reaction will be spontaneous. To do this problem, we first need to find the temperature at which the reaction changes or switches between spontaneous and non-spontaneous. This temperature is the equilibrium temperature. At equilibrium, delta G is equal to zero. And so we make delta G equal to zero. Next, we substitute the change in enthalpy and entropy values and solve. Lastly, we need to investigate the sizes of the two terms in the Gibbs equation. Enthalpy change is positive, which means it contributes to increasing the size of delta G. But because delta S is positive, the second term is negative overall and will decrease the size of delta G. The larger the temperature value, the more the second term will decrease delta G and contribute towards spontaneity. Therefore, temperatures above 417 Kelvin, not below it, will make the forwards reaction spontaneous. Gibbs free energy change is also related to the position of an equilibrium,
In other words, it is related to the relative quantities of reactants and products in the equilibrium mixture. Put another way, delta G standard is related to the equilibrium constant. Let's investigate this. For a spontaneous reaction. In other words, when delta G is negative, the free energy decreases over time as the reactants change to products until it reaches a minimum value. At this point, the reaction is at equilibrium. The system's entropy is maximized at equilibrium for a constant temperature and pressure because the system has achieved the highest distribution of energy and particles. Remember, high entropy is favorable. Whether the forwards or reverse reaction occurs, the value of delta G decreases as it approaches equilibrium. At equilibrium, delta G equals zero. The reaction quotient Q measures the relative concentrations of reactants and products at a given moment in the reaction. So Q is a measure of the extent of the reaction. The reaction quotient is zero at the start of the reaction increases during the course of the reaction and is equal to infinity at the end of the reaction. We can see therefore that Gibbs free energy is related to the reaction quotient. And this is the equation. The relationship helps predict whether a reaction will proceed in the forward or reverse direction if we know the temperature. At equilibrium, the reaction quotient is referred to as the equilibrium constant K. Again, when a spontaneous reaction is at equilibrium, the Gibbs energy is at its lowest, zero. The reaction will not proceed spontaneously to the left or right anymore, as this would increase the Gibbs energy of the system. It would also decrease the entropy of the universe, which is unfavorable. Only changing reaction conditions such as temperature and pressure would allow the equilibrium to shift spontaneously. Since Q is equal to K at equilibrium and delta G equals zero, we can reformulate this equation. And rearranging, we get delta G standard is equal to negative RT times the natural log of K. Since the change in Gibbs free energy is negative for a spontaneous process, the equilibrium sits to the right. In the equilibrium mixture, there is a higher concentration of products to reactants. The opposite is true for a non-spontaneous process, where delta G is positive. The equilibrium mixture has a higher proportion of reactants. This equation allows us to use the equilibrium constant to solve for the change in Gibbs free energy and therefore determine the spontaneity of a reaction. We can also rearrange this equation and solve for K. And using this equation, we can use the change in Gibbs free energy to solve for the equilibrium constant. This will allow us to have an understanding of the position of the equilibrium in other words, the relative proportions of reactants and products. For example, calculate the equilibrium constant K for this equilibrium reaction at 298 Kelvin, given that delta G standard is positive 4.8 kilojoules per mole. We can substitute the given values for delta G standard R and T into the equation and solve. We must remember to ensure that all units are compatible. For example, since the unit of R is in joules per Kelvin per mole, we can convert the unit of delta G standard from kilojoules per mole to joules per mole. Since delta G is positive, we know that the forward reaction is non-spontaneous and that the reverse reaction will occur spontaneously. And the value of the equilibrium constant supports this. It is less than 1. An equilibrium constant value less than 1 indicates that the equilibrium sits to the left, towards the reactants. If the equilibrium sits to the right, 
the equilibrium constant is larger than 1. There are more products than reactants at equilibrium. Finally, when the equilibrium constant is equal to 1, the reactants and products are equally favoured. Now let's summarise the main points. The energy available to do work at a constant pressure and temperature is called the Gibbs free energy. It is related to the enthalpy change, entropy change and temperature of the system by the Gibbs equation. When delta G is negative, a reaction is spontaneous and for a reversible reaction, the forward reaction will proceed. A positive delta G indicates a non-spontaneous reaction or a spontaneous reverse reaction. The relative magnitudes and signs of the two terms in the equation influence the sign and magnitude of delta G and the reaction spontaneity. At equilibrium, delta G is equal to zero and we can use this fact to deduce the temperature at which a reaction becomes spontaneous. Alternatively, Hess's law and Gibbs free energy of formation values can be used to calculate delta G for a reaction. The change in Gibbs free energy is also related to the reaction quotient and the equilibrium constant in these equations. The second of the two equations allows us to determine the value of delta G or the equilibrium constant to assess whether a reaction is spontaneous or not or whether reactants or products are favoured in an equilibrium.